In the competitive field of civil engineering, being well prepared for interviews is essential. This video presents a curated list of the top 25 interview questions that candidates commonly face, along with insightful answers to boost your confidence. Whether you're a fresh graduate or an experienced professional, understanding these key questions can enhance your interview performance. Join us as we explore various topics, from technical skills to project management, ensuring you're ready for any challenge that comes your way. 1. What motivated you to pursue a career in civil engineering? My passion for civil engineering stemmed from a fascination with how infrastructure transforms communities. Growing up, I was captivated by large-scale projects like bridges and highways, wondering how they were planned and constructed. I wanted to contribute to building sustainable structures that enhance people's lives. The blend of creativity, problem-solving, and tangible results in civil engineering appealed to me. Additionally, Witnessing the positive impact of well-designed infrastructure on community development solidified my decision to pursue this career path. Engaging in hands-on projects during my education further fueled my enthusiasm. 2. Can you explain the difference between reinforced concrete and pre-stressed concrete? Reinforced concrete contains steel bars or mesh embedded within the concrete to enhance its tensile strength. This method allows structures to resist tension forces, making it suitable for beams and slabs. Pre-stressed concrete, on the other hand, involves pre-tensioning or post-tensioning steel tendons within the concrete before it is subjected to external loads. This process compresses the concrete, enhancing its ability to withstand tensile stresses. Consequently, pre-stressed concrete can achieve longer spans with thinner sections and better performance under load compared to conventional reinforced concrete. 3. What are the main types of foundations used in building construction? When would you choose one over the other? In building construction, the main types of foundations include shallow foundations, such as spread footings and mat foundations, and deep foundations, like pile and drilled shaft foundations. Shallow foundations are typically used when the soil has sufficient bearing capacity close to the surface, which is ideal for smaller structures. In contrast, deep foundations are necessary when surface soils are weak or when loads are heavy, requiring deeper, more stable ground. The choice between these types depends on factors like soil conditions, load requirements, and building type. 4. Describe your experience with computer-aided design CAD, software. Which programs are you most proficient in? My experience with computer-aided design CAD, software spans several years, during which I have utilized various programs for designing civil engineering projects. I am most proficient in AutoCAD and Revit, which I regularly use for creating detailed architectural plans and structural models. In addition, I have experience with Civil 3D for grading and corridor design, as well as SketchUp for conceptual presentations. These tools have enabled me to enhance design accuracy, streamline workflows, and facilitate effective collaboration with multidisciplinary teams. 5. How do you ensure safety on a construction site? Ensuring safety on a construction site involves several key practices. First, conducting thorough risk assessments helps identify potential hazards. Providing comprehensive training for all workers is essential to ensure they understand safety protocols. Regular safety meetings promote awareness and encourage open communication about safety concerns. Additionally, implementing strict personal protective equipment PPE, requirements protects workers from injuries. Regular inspections of equipment and work areas help maintain a safe environment. Lastly, fostering a culture of safety where everyone feels responsible for each other's well-being is crucial for minimizing accidents. 6. What factors do you consider when designing a bridge? When designing a bridge, several key factors must be taken into account. First, the type of bridge and its intended use determine the design requirements. Load capacity is crucial, as the bridge must support vehicles, pedestrians, and environmental loads like wind and seismic activity. Site conditions, including soil type and topography, influence foundation design. Materials used must be durable and suitable for the environment. Finally, aesthetic considerations and compliance with local regulations are essential to ensure the bridge blends into its surroundings while meeting safety standards. 7. Can you explain the concept of soil liquefaction and its implications for construction? Soil liquefaction occurs when saturated soil significantly loses strength and rigidity due to applied stress, often during seismic activity. This phenomenon can transform solid ground into a fluid-like state, leading to severe ground instability. For construction, this poses risks such as sinking foundations, tilting structures, and increased susceptibility to landslides. Engineers must assess soil conditions and employ mitigation strategies, such as improving drainage, using deep foundations, or selecting appropriate construction techniques, to minimize risks associated with liquefaction. 
8. How do you approach cost estimation for a large-scale civil engineering project? Cost estimation for large-scale civil engineering projects involves several key steps. Initially, I gather project requirements and specifications, followed by detailed analysis of material and labor costs. I utilize historical data from similar projects and collaborate with suppliers for accurate pricing. It's essential to consider potential risks and uncertainties, so I include contingency allowances in the budget. Throughout the process, I engage with stakeholders to ensure transparency and adjust estimates as necessary. Regular reviews and updates are crucial to align the project with financial goals while maintaining quality and timelines. 9. What methods do you use to manage and mitigate environmental impacts in your projects? To manage and mitigate environmental impacts effectively, I employ several strategies. First, conducting thorough environmental impact assessments, EIAS, helps identify potential risks before project initiation. I also engage stakeholders early in the process to incorporate their concerns and suggestions. Implementing best management practices, such as erosion control measures and waste reduction techniques, is crucial. Additionally, I prioritize using sustainable materials and technologies that minimize ecological footprints. Regular monitoring during construction ensures compliance with environmental regulations and allows for timely adjustments if unexpected impacts arise. 10. Describe a challenging project you've worked on and how you overcame obstacles. During a major infrastructure project, we encountered unexpected geological challenges that threatened timelines and budgets. The soil conditions were far worse than initial surveys indicated, requiring a redesign of the foundation. To address this, I organized a series of collaborative meetings with geotechnical engineers to analyze the data and identify alternative solutions. We implemented advanced soil stabilization techniques and adjusted our project schedule to minimize disruptions. Effective communication with all stakeholders ensured transparency and maintained trust throughout the process. This experience reinforced my problem-solving skills and adaptability in high-pressure situations. 11. How do you stay updated with the latest developments and technologies in civil engineering? Staying updated in civil engineering involves a multifaceted approach. I regularly read industry journals and publications to keep abreast of new research and techniques. Participating in professional organizations and attending conferences allows me to network with other professionals and learn about innovative practices. Online courses and webinars also play a crucial role in enhancing my skills. Additionally, I follow relevant blogs and engage with online forums to discuss emerging technologies and share experiences with peers. This continuous learning keeps my knowledge current and relevant. 12. What is your experience with building information modeling, BIM? My experience with building information modeling, BIM, spans several years, where I have utilized it extensively in various projects. I have worked with software such as Autodesk Revit and Navisworks, which have allowed me to create detailed 3D models that enhance collaboration among stakeholders. BIM has significantly improved project visualization, leading to better design decisions and reduced errors during construction. It also facilitates efficient project management by integrating data related to costs, schedules, and materials, helping to streamline workflows and improve communication across teams. 13. How do you handle conflicts or disagreements with team members or clients? When conflicts arise, I prioritize open communication and active listening. I strive to understand the perspectives of all parties involved. I often arrange a meeting where everyone can express their concerns in a constructive manner. This collaborative approach helps in identifying common goals and finding mutually acceptable solutions. If necessary, I facilitate a brainstorming session to explore various options. My aim is always to maintain a positive working relationship while ensuring project objectives are met. Keeping emotions in check and focusing on facts helps steer discussions toward resolution. 14. Can you explain the importance of sustainable design in civil engineering? Sustainable design in civil engineering is vital for minimizing environmental impact and promoting resource efficiency. It encourages the use of renewable materials and energy sources, reducing carbon footprints. Integrating sustainability into projects leads to long-term benefits, including lower operational costs and improved community health. Engineers must consider life cycle assessments, ensuring that structures are not only functional but also environmentally responsible. This approach also fosters resilience against climate change, making infrastructure safer and more adaptable for future generations. 15. What factors do you consider when designing a water supply system for a community? When designing a water supply system for a community, several critical factors must be assessed. First, the availability of water sources, such as rivers, lakes, or aquifers, is essential. 
Next, population density and growth projections guide the capacity and infrastructure needed. The quality of water must also be analyzed to determine necessary treatment processes. Additionally, the system's layout should consider topography and existing utilities. Finally, budget constraints and regulatory compliance play significant roles in design decisions, ensuring the system is sustainable and efficient for the community's needs. 16. How do you ensure quality control in construction projects? Quality control in construction projects involves systematic processes to maintain standards. Regular inspections and testing of materials and workmanship are essential. Establishing clear project specifications and using checklists can help ensure compliance with these standards. Training staff on quality expectations and conducting frequent audits fosters a culture of quality. Engaging third-party inspectors adds an objective layer of oversight. Collecting feedback from all stakeholders during the construction phase allows for continuous improvement and timely adjustments when issues arise. Implementing these practices can significantly enhance project outcomes. 17. Describe your experience with project management software and techniques. I have utilized various project management software tools such as Microsoft Project, Primavera P6, and Asana in my civil engineering projects. These tools enable me to plan, execute, and monitor project timelines effectively, ensuring milestones are met. I emphasize collaboration by using shared platforms for team communication and document management. Techniques like Agile and Waterfall help tailor project management approaches to specific project needs. Regularly updating stakeholders and adapting to changes are crucial components of my management strategy, enhancing project success and stakeholder satisfaction. 18. What methods do you use to assess the structural integrity of existing buildings? Assessing the structural integrity of existing buildings typically involves a combination of visual inspections, non-destructive testing, NDT, and detailed structural analysis. Visual inspections help identify visible signs of distress, such as cracks or deformation. Non-destructive methods like ultrasonic testing or infrared thermography can reveal hidden flaws without damaging the structure. Additionally, performing load tests can provide data on the building's performance under stress. Finally, detailed modeling and analysis using software tools help evaluate the building against current codes and standards, ensuring safety and functionality. 19. How do you approach designing structures in earthquake-prone areas? Designing structures in earthquake-prone areas involves a thorough understanding of seismic forces and their effects on buildings. I start by conducting a detailed site analysis, including geological assessments and historical seismic activity. Next, I employ seismic design codes and standards, ensuring the structural system can withstand potential ground motions. I often use flexible materials and reinforcement techniques to enhance ductility, allowing structures to absorb and dissipate energy. Collaboration with geotechnical engineers is vital to assess soil stability, and I prioritize regular inspections and maintenance to ensure long-term resilience against earthquakes. 20. Can you explain the concept of traffic flow analysis and its importance in transportation engineering? Traffic flow analysis involves studying the movement of vehicles and pedestrians on roadways to optimize traffic patterns and enhance safety. This process utilizes various mathematical and simulation models to assess factors such as speed, density, and flow rates. Understanding traffic flow is crucial for designing effective transportation systems, as it aids in identifying congestion points, evaluating the impact of new developments, and informing infrastructure improvements. By analyzing traffic patterns, engineers can create solutions that reduce delays, improve safety, and promote efficient mobility for all users. 21. What strategies do you employ to reduce construction waste and promote recycling? To minimize construction waste, I implement a comprehensive waste management plan that includes accurate material estimation, careful planning, and efficient resource utilization. I advocate for reusing materials when feasible and integrate recycling protocols for waste generated on site. Collaborating with suppliers who prioritize sustainable practices is crucial. Additionally, I encourage the use of modular construction techniques that allow for prefabrication, reducing on site waste. Training the team on waste reduction strategies fosters a culture of sustainability throughout the project. 22. How do you handle unexpected changes or challenges during a project? When faced with unexpected changes or challenges during a project, I prioritize communication and flexibility. First, I assess the situation to understand the impact on the project timeline and budget. Engaging with team members and stakeholders helps gather diverse perspectives and solutions. I ensure that everyone is aligned on the new objectives. Adjusting the project plan accordingly, I maintain transparency about any changes. Regular updates keep the team informed and motivated. Emphasizing a collaborative environment allows us to adapt quickly and effectively tackle issues as they arise. 23. 
What experience do you have with green building certification systems like LEED? Green building certification systems like LEED have been integral to my projects. I've worked on several initiatives aimed at achieving LEED certification, focusing on sustainable site development, water efficiency, and energy optimization. One notable project involved collaborating with architects and sustainability consultants to ensure compliance with LEED standards. This required thorough documentation of materials used, energy modeling, and conducting post-occupancy evaluations. My experience has taught me the importance of integrating sustainability into every phase of design and construction, driving both resource efficiency and environmental responsibility. 24. How do you ensure compliance with local building codes and regulations in your designs? To ensure compliance with local building codes and regulations, I start by thoroughly researching the applicable standards and requirements for each project. This includes reviewing zoning laws, building codes, and specific regulations related to safety, accessibility, and environmental impact. I collaborate closely with local authorities and stakeholders to ensure all designs meet necessary guidelines. Regular inspections during construction help confirm adherence to these codes. Additionally, I stay informed about updates or changes in regulations that may affect my designs or construction practices. 25. Can you describe a time when you had to present complex technical information to non-technical stakeholders? How did you approach this? During a project briefing for a new infrastructure development, I had to explain complex technical designs to a community board. Understanding their lack of technical background, I simplified the information using visual aids, such as diagrams and models. I focused on the project's benefits, relating technical aspects to real-world impacts, like improved traffic flow and safety. Encouraging questions and providing straightforward answers fostered engagement. This approach not only clarified the technical details but also built trust and informed the community about the project's significance. In this video, we've explored the top 25 civil engineering interview questions and answers that will help you prepare for your next job opportunity. By understanding these common queries and crafting thoughtful responses, you can enhance your confidence and improve your chances of success in interviews. Don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments below and let us know if you found this information helpful. If you enjoyed this content, Please give us a like and subscribe to our channel for more valuable insights and resources. Thank you for watching, and best of luck in your civil engineering career.